Hello again. I got a fun video to do today. I understand that Mr. Brantley's third grade class at Cumberland Elementary School is learning about numbers, powers, and dimensions. So I thought I'd talk about that. Let's start with a simple number. Let's start with 2. Okay. There's 2. Now if I raise 2 to the 0 power, I get 1, right? Well, it turns out if I raise any number to the 0 power, I get 1. If I get raise 412,217.3 to the 0 power, I get 1. <coughs> so let's trace 2 to the first power. Well, that's just 2. And 2 to the second power is 4, because it's 2 times 2. And 2 to the third power is 8, because it's 2 times, this again, 2 times 2 times 2, and so on. So we go down like that. We, eventually you'll learn the pattern. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, blah, blah, blah. Well, it turns out you can associate dimensions with these. What's a shape that's got zero dimension? Do we know that? Zero dimension is a point. Okay, point is this little idealized thing right there, okay? It's got location, but it doesn't have any size. It means no matter how close you zoom into it, it still looks really little. All right, let's, let's put a point right there, and I'm going to make it big enough to see. Color it in there. Okay, so that's a zero-dimensional object. Hmm. Zero dimension is a point. So that's a point. Okay, what's a one-dimensional object? Well, that's a line, or for us, a line segment. So I'm going to do this. There's a one-dimensional object. It's got distance in one dimensional, but not in one dimension, one direction, but none of the others. So that's a line, or a segment. I'll call it a line for right now. What's a two-dimensional object? Okay, two dimensions. Now, let's just say the length of that is two, two somethings, two, two hand spans. How's that? That's the, that's the length of that little line segment. What's a two-dimensional object? Well, that might be a square. So let's just do that. Let's rotate this line up like that and rotate that line up like that and connect that. Okay, so I got a square now, and it's the same distance on both sides. And I'm going to get rid of all my little dots in the middle. What do you suppose the area of that is? Well, guess what? It's four. Okay, and we can tell that because we've got two little or four little squares that are all one by one. Okay, so that tells me that's length, that's area, that's my square. Right? So it has an area of four square hands, I guess, since we decided to use that for our unit. Well, what if I go one more dimension? If I extend this one more dimension, what do I get? I get a cube. Well, let's just extend this back. Okay. And let's say that's also two. Guess, just guess what the dimension of this now. This is going to be in cubic units. It's going to be eight. Okay. Isn't this cool? All right, and if you don't believe me, do the same thing. Draw out all your little squares here. And each one of these squares, there's going to be cubes now, is one by one by one. So it's one cubic unit. So it might be a cubic foot or a cubic hand is what we're using. So one, two, three, four, and there's another row of these back there, five, six, seven, and you can't see the eighth one back there, but it's back there. Now, got to be ready for this. What if we go one more dimension? What happens then? I don't know about you. I only live in three dimensions. I don't know how to live in more dimensions than that. But mathematicians don't mind. We can, we, mathematicians can calculate things in more dimensions. Math doesn't care. Math can work with as many dimensions as you want it to. Now, the fact that we live in three dimensions makes it kind of hard to draw anything bigger than that, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Well, let's see, 2 to the 4 is going to be 16, right? It's 2, 4, 8, 16. So it's 16 whatever, so I'm not sure what that would be. And this, this gets called a hypercube. Okay, a hypercube. Now, I don't know how to draw it on this board. I actually went and looked it up. And the best thing we can come up with now is we can draw the three-dimensional shadow of a four-dimensional hypercube. I'm three-dimensional, right? If I go out in the sunshine and I look on the sidewalk, I can see the two-dimensional shadow of me 
on the sidewalk. I'm three dimensions, my shadow is two dimensions. So, what mathematicians can do is imagine a four-dimensional hypercube with, that's its volume, I guess you'd call it, that's its, its uh, size, all right? And they can project that four-dimensional object into three dimensions so we can draw a picture of it. Now, I'm not good enough to be able to uh, draw it, especially not freehand like this. That's what a four-dimensional hypercube looks like. That's its three-dimensional shadow. Nuts, huh? But that's what it looks like. So maybe if Mr. Brantley doesn't mind, you could go on Google or something and find out what other four-dimensional surfaces look like, shapes. Okay? Got one more thing to tell you. I'm going to try to keep this short. Any reason you can think of that numbers can only be raised to integer powers? 2 to the 2 equals 4. All right. What happens if I raise 2 to the 1 half power? I can do that. Mathematics doesn't mind, doesn't care what that uh, power is. The power doesn't have to be a whole number if you don't want it to be. And when you, if you become a mathematician, or an engineer, or a scientist, or an economist, or anybody who works with numbers, you may find out it's handy to be able to do that. And that number is approximately 1.4142, I think. Well, actually, 2, 1, 3, 5, 6, da, 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 da. Okay, a bunch of other numbers here. This one turns out to go on forever. I'll tell you about more about that in some other video. Well, if a half worked, what about something else? What about 2 to the 3 fourths? Well, that equals 1.6. I've got to write it down here. 6, 1, 6, 8, 1, 7, 9. And that goes on, too. So there's no reason you have to have whole powers. And here's the best part. This thing right here is called a square root. If I have a box whose area is 2, and by the way, we generally write the square root this way. It's like this check sign with a thing on top of it. If the area equals 2, that side is a square root of 2. So, if I had a box It was two on a side, two inches or two meters or two somethings on a side. Guess what? I'm, the area is four, so two squared equals four, and square root of four equals two. Those are opposites of each other. If you take two to the second power, you get four. If you take four to the one over two power, you get two. This and this are the inverses of each other. Who knew? Huh? Well, there you have it. I, if you want, if Mr. Brantley asked me to, I can certainly do more. You guys decide, okay?